There we go. Okay. Um, welcome. Uh, I'm uh, Lauren Vereter. I'm a mechanical engineer at uh, Google. And we're going to talk about um, the Google implementation of the rack uh, for the Open OR v3. And first of all, Hi, my name is Ian. I'm the engineering manager. I work at Google. Um, so at a high level, the Google Open Rack um, is like, the, as the base spec calls out, it supports OCP and 19-inch payloads. Uh, we've been able to qualify it for uh, up to 3,000 pounds of uh, IT gear. Um, it's currently uh, being deployed. We've had a few quarters of deployment on it. Um, we've been really leveraging the front and rear uh, mounting features to uh, develop a lot of modules to meet different data center requirements from security, cable management, uh, containment, and so on. Um, and we're also finding a lot of uh, serviceability benefits with the left bus bar position. And Lauren will go into that in a little bit. In terms of external footprint, uh, there are a couple of different options uh, that we have. Uh, we have a standard width of uh, 28 inches that we've been using. Uh, in terms of depth, we have a 32-inch depth as well as a 48-inch depth, and that's pr the 32-inch depth is primarily for some of our legacy data centers. Um, both use the left bus bar position. Um, the deeper bus, the, the deeper version, the 48-inch version, also has a shallower location of the bus bar for some of our legacy payloads. Um, so we've tried to maintain some backward compatibility with the with the deeper version of the rack, but that's uh, you know uh, both are really uh, uh, compatible in feature set. Um, there is a provision for a bus bar on the right uh, as well, um, as well as any other uh, you know PDU mounting or any other features that we normally have, and both support um, similar modules in terms of cable management, in terms of security, and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. For, so for, for those who weren't uh, here at the uh, 8 a.m. session, which is a little early, um, I do I want to recap a little bit on the uh, open rack spec. We do have two options. Um, one is a center, uh, center bus bar location, and one is a left bus bar location and different uh, payload dimensions. So um, for the center bus bar location, there are advantages of power distribution. You're within symmetry. Uh, but here I wanted to kind of go into a little bit more detail on why we're choosing the left bus bar, going with a wider payload, and how that uh, implements, how that gives us some advantages on uh, rear serviceability. Right. So, so first of all, in the in the rack, if we wanted to do uh, what I would call a maximum dimension payload, right. So we're using the entire 610 millimeter width of our uh, internal dimensions of the rack. So. Um, as for deployments where you want to maximize, you know, number of servers. So there's overhead in the rack, right? Sheet metal and power, which is kind of d divided by your number of servers, which is a little bit of overhead. So when you want to maximize your number of uh, equipment inside, you would do this, where you would do a maxim maximum width and direct connect to the bus bar. And so that would be achieved with floating, floating bus bar or floating connectors on your payloads, direct connect to the bus bar, full width, right? So there's no um, adapter shelving or anything required. Um, where it gets a little uh, tricky and where we get our advantage of our bus bar, where wider, we can left bias, bus bias the bus bar and right bias uh, EIA equipment. So a 19 inch, you know, 17.4 inch uh, wide equipment, you move it off to the side. So, and what that gives you is you don't have a bus bar in the middle where it could possibly get in the way of power supply, fans, or anything that you want to uh, get access to and rear service on the equipment. Um, obvious question then is how do you get power because now you're um, offset from the bus bar. So what we do is we have adapter or intermediate shelving. So as needed in the rack, if you want to, you know, you can mix and match these within the rack. So an intermediate shelf is installed into the rack, which connects to your bus bar. You can see it on here, the left connection, which is blind mate uh, connection. And then we run a horizontal bus bar um, across this intermediate shelving. And we can have uh, different variations of this intermediate bus bar. I've shown it here with a payload connection um, on the far right uh, of your EIA equipment. It can be left, right, or center. Um, you could have multiple payload uh, connections for redundant power supplies of, of equipment. But what this gives you is the flexibility of, you're, you're not tied to um, a single 
uh, bus connection to EIA um, with equipment. Um, and then, so, so back to the rack itself, right? So we have, uh, we have rails that, so, you know, we're, we're not tied to a specific uh, uh, lineup in the rack. You can mount rails at every half OU within the uh, rack, and we're calling them here equipment rails, um, which could be either for direct connect max, max width uh, equipment or for um, loading uh, EIA shelves. Um, another feature that's kind of hard to see in the lower right is we do have some features on there which are dimples, sheet metal dimples to uh, give you some multi-stage alignment for your connectors. ORV3 connector is great from an improved gatherability, but anything we can do in the sheet metal to get our you know, equipment closer, right? So we do the you know, spot point dimples on the rails to guide the, guide the shelves in as you get closer to engaging the power supply or power, the power connector. Um, we do a secure mounting of the shelves. I know there's um, some uh, benefits of toolless uh, uh, mounting of these shelves. We actually screw them in, you know, um, so that gives us a little bit more of a rugged, um, uh, rugged mounting of the shelves and the equipment so we can fully load the racks uh, and deploy them uh, fully loaded. Um, so call to action, right? You know, I mean, we're, we're excited to be here, ORV, uh, get, presenting part of the, uh, getting our things into the ORV3 spec, um, but we're looking for uh, feedback from the community on how we can improve either what we've already put in the, uh, the rack or if we can um, add features to our spec for uh, additional front or mount, you know, front uh, doors or rear heat exchangers, or I know there's a question earlier about incorporating uh, liquid manifolds uh, in, in, into the rear of the rack. So um, this, that's what we're hoping to get from the community and getting some feedback on how to improve our designs. Uh, we do have a sample version of this rack um, out on the floor. Um, and like Ian said, we're deploying this uh, as is in the data centers right now. Um, the spec is on the open compute side. It went through the incubation com committee, and uh, it's available on the wiki. So short and sweet. Uh, questions? So at, at the 8 a.m. Uh, session, somebody asked a question about the meta version of the rack yep. uh, and asked, like, well, how did you happen to pick that width? And, and the answer was, well, we wanted to fit three half width modules across. Can you say anything about like how you picked these dimensions? What was it you're optimizing for? I'll take that. Do you want to take that? Uh, yeah, so the width is mainly a function of the, trying to get our cable management space right. Um, so we use this rack in a lot of networking applications. So we have a lot of cables running across. Um, and what we've learned um, is that with the width and the, the OU height, we're able to get a lot of machine density in the rack as well. So um, I know like, between 24 and 28, you know, 28 inches is a large, large external footprint, but we're able to balance that out um, from a machine density and cable management perspective. So that's kind of how we arrived at 28. Oh. One other question, if I may. <coughs> By moving the bus bar off to the side, you, the other thing that you've solved is now you could put like a really big, deep J-bod into the rack. Was that part of the motivation as well? Well, it, it's, so we have, um, you know, we have the deep version of the rack as well, which, which allows you to do that. Um, but, you know, you could actually leave things, leave a rear door open and extend, you know, in parts of the rack beyond that, that space. So you're not tied to the, uh, you know, the middle bus bar blocking things. So, yes, you can do that. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.